Or told. <laughs> Today is Monday, June 7th, 2021. It is 5.08 p.m. And to remain in compliance with the governor's executive order, which are still in place regarding virtual meeting, um, we are recording this for posterity's sake. With that, I will hand this over to the honorable chairperson who stepped away from her computer, but now she's back to her computer, Cindy Greenblatt. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, I believe we have a quorum. I heard from Tara Costanzo that she was not going to be here. Um, and I think everyone else is on the call. No, no, Pam is not on the call. All right, so otherwise we are all, we have a quorum, we can move forward. Um, we have two minutes, uh, two meeting minutes to approve. The first one would be our regular meeting of May 3rd. Did anyone have any issues with any of the uh, minutes, which was, will never happen? All right, if not, then could I have a motion to approve as submitted? So moved. Uh, Thank you, Jim. A second? I'll second. All right, Dan or someone second? All right, so the second set of minutes was from the special meeting of 517. Um, once again, Mary had them out. Mary, thank you for these. They are a wonderful um, accounting of what went on. I mean, for anyone who didn't see it, they this was a really a, a great meeting and you captured it. So did anyone have anything to add or see anything that was missing from those minutes? And if not, could I get a motion to accept the minutes of the special meeting of 517? So moved. Thank you, Jim. Second. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> All, right. All right. All those in favor, I know it's going to be aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. Minutes are approved. OK, old business. Um, Gary, do you have anything to tell us on the historic grant process update? Joan, I've reached out to him a couple times. Um, I have not heard from them um, on the status or if there was anything missing or any information they can provide, um, but uh, I have not heard anything yet. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully it's in the works. Okay. So for the University of Hartford update, um, I don't see Alex or Mason on the call. So let me just tell you that the the gentleman who had done our social media, who was um, oh, Chaz, and I can't remember his last name right now, but um, he has stepped down and they recruited another young, um, another student from the college. His name is Mason O'Connor, and he is going to be our new social media coordinator. Uh, I told him it would be virtual and it would probably be light work this summer. We really have only, uh, from what I could see, one thing on the horizon. But if he joins, we can put a face to the name and, and say hello and welcome him. And then Alex Serrata, who was the, oh, there's Mason. Okay. He's connecting. Thanks. Mason, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Great, thank you. Um, I just introduced you to, uh, to the group. Oh, hi, it's nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for having me. I told him that you were going to be taking over from Chaz and that we were going to have kind of a limited summer. It would all be virtual, but we do have a couple of things coming up that we'll need your help with. Um, have you been able to take over the Instagram account from Chaz? Um, not yet. He said he's very busy today. We were supposed to have a meeting, but tomorrow he said he will have some time and we can meet then. Okay, that's fine. I just, I know that he's the only one really that manages that. So that would be great if you had control of that. And I will give you access to the Facebook page and uh, so that you'll be able to post on the Facebook page for us as well and help us with, you know, events and things like that. All right. Okay. All right. That's great. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining the team. Um, I don't see Alex on the meeting, but he did take all of the minutes that uh, Mary had provided. And I think he's able to watch it if not, but he updated the, uh, the community input from sessions one and two. Can you share the screen, Gary? Yep. Okay. 
How's that? That's great. You know what's on my screen? This meeting is being recorded. How do I get that off? Straight got it. Got it. What what do I do? Got it. See, it says got it. Got it. It says continue or leave the meeting. Do I hit continue? Continue. Thank you. Okay, you did it. Okay. So this is what Alex explained to me that he did. This is kind of a holistic look at um, all of the suggestions that were made by individuals. And so while his grand total says 268, and we talked about this a little bit, that did not mean 268 people individually. What it meant was 268 suggestions. So somebody could have said they wanted walking trails to plant trees and a community garden. Those are three different suggestions. So it took the uh, additional information that was shared at the second visioning session, and he blended it into and, and redid the pie graphs from the Excel spreadsheet that he's been keeping. You know, I think if you look at it, you can see the there's a pattern developing in, in the community input. And remember, this is holistic. This is the number of times things are mentioned. So, and I think this process will drive the survey, hopefully, as we work forward to that. Right, do anyone have any questions or comments on that? I'm not sure how much I could answer for you, but. I think you can see that we're just building on the first ses session and adding the four or five comments from the second session. I guess the only thing I would ask is, is how, and I guess anybody on the committee could probably answer this, open spaces pretty much leave it as is. I'm asking. <clears throat> is that everybody's um, interpretation of when, I mean, you were all on the same, visioning sessions that I was on and open space basically means leave it as it is. Well, so you have uh, several farm fields and uh, the, uh, the wetland space, which was once a pasture, <coughs> I learned. Um, and so I suppose that could be equivalent to open space, keeping those fields going, but. Uh, yeah, but I mean, if someone didn't walk that trail and they're just driving by, I mean, and they give their opinion, open space would be open space. Again, I'm not, I'm not going to bicker with anyone. I'm just, I'm just asking because it's yeah. a curiosity question. Because that's I that's think, a big number right there. Yeah, it's a it's a big number and, a, and an open concept because certainly a big part of it's going to be open space with a trail or two, and then, and they may they may or may not be the people who think that we should or should not have a, a sports field. Um, but I'm they just don't looking, want to develop, I guess. I'm just looking at my notes from the meeting and I tried to like, just label what they were talking about. And I've got several that sort of like say open space fields, um, open space farms, like they lump it with other things. So to Mike's point, I think we have to look at that nuance of multiple uses um, throughout this feedback. And sometimes it looks like it's just singularly open space, you know, in, um, in, in some of these pie charts. We just have to be careful. Maybe that's that a good survey. A survey could, could perhaps yeah. get refine a little bit, like what yeah. open space in combination, completely open space, uh, you know, what is the actual, intent of saying they want open space. Jen, I'm sorry, I, I know you're speaking. That was gonna be my point, exactly. We think alike. Yeah. All right. So I the, I'll just data collection, right, Cindy? So like we just keep, but that's a good nuance to watch for, for sure. And then the survey will tell us more. Yeah, if, you, if, you, if the survey's set up so you can distinguish among uh, different emphases on the open space part. <clears throat> and we could even make that, I mean, we'll talk with Gary, you'll help us uh, on this third visioning session, but uh, we can even make that some part of our introduction to, to we see, we see this, 
What do you mean by it? Do you want 100% open space? Do you want open space in combination? And I think that's why there's 268 responses that we're seeing, even though there are only about 120 people, because people did want several things on the property. And the properties, and it has the capacity to do that. So maybe we can ask for more um, clarification on that if we have a third session. Yeah, because even if you look at it, educational system, it matters how you define that too. Right. And what does that mean? Education? Exactly, exactly, exactly. Right. All right, well, I, I love the fact that he has the neighbor concerns there because that's something that we're gonna have to pay close attention to. And that, uh, yeah. I mean, those are the, the stakeholders really, the people that live right there that we're gonna wanna make sure that they feel that they were heard. And I, I like how that's a separate Point of view there. Are we waiting, Gary, to show any of this to the public? Well, hey, and can I just cut in for one second? When it says neighbor concerns, there's nothing. No, those that's a heading for those things underneath it. Oh, I got you. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if we do this right, um, hopefully the house values will go up. Yeah. yeah, we'd have to really screw it up to yeah. not do that. <clears throat> it was great on the University of Hartford um, presentation. They said they were going to research for the fall the impact of different types of development on the farm in terms of how it impacts the property values. So they're already on that for their fall presentation, which I will be interesting to hear what happens to your property if it's near a farm, if it's near open space, if it's near a town, you know. Uh, I don't know, a town owned barn, for example. I mean, so they're gonna look into that for us too with some real facts. Gary, what did you think about my question? Do we, do we make any of this um, available so that it, the next visioning session has maybe has generate, this generates some ideas? I mean, I, I guess my thought is, it's not, I, I don't know if we're gonna generate any new ideas. It seems the categories kind of seem to be where they are, I'm wondering if, I'm wondering if the we change the focus of the third visioning session to have people specifically expand upon those, uh, and maybe that's what you gear the marketing towards. Like, okay, the first two visioning sessions we've heard this. Now, let's kind of extrapolate what that means, um, or do you do the survey first? to get the feedback from the survey on what this means. Um, well, I'm kind of looking at the breakdown just to see. Like I'm, I'm looking at the other points and some things I'd, I'd like to garnish off of that, right? Concern about maintaining costs, donate trees onto the property. You, know, you, re you really can't talk about neighborhood concerns until you really break down what it is you're trying to get to. I think it's good that it's there. So I guess, I guess my thing is I'm not sure, you know, if, if you have a third, if you're going to just be leading the questions and leading the responses, right? So we're saying, hey, these are the things that the other two um, visioning sessions came to. Does, does anyone else want to chime into these categories? Um, my concern is you're People are just going to either piggyback on these categories. I don't know if you're going to get any more, although maybe that's it. Maybe we've exhausted the categories. You know, to the point before that everybody was making, I see when I hear open space, unless it specifically says, um, you know, just open space, to me, open space is parking trails and community garden and the sports field. And, you know, just by conservation commission definition, it's, it's open, it's not developed. So I would like to dig deeper into what that means. And how many of those are overlaps where people say, you know, I'd really like to see open space there, maybe some walking trails or, or, or a community garden. Does that count as one or is that three? Well, the way it's here, it's counted as three. Yeah. The way it's re represented, yeah. three. So maybe that is 
the, the deeper dive into what exactly is is our largest category, which is open space. What exactly are people looking for when they say that? Yeah, I, I guess my thought is I, I want to <clears throat> kind of peel, excuse me, peel it apart because your third visioning session might be the opportunity to be like, okay, we heard X percent of participants said walking trails. Um, you know, maybe this is getting too far into what University of Hartford needs to do down the road, but okay, what's the impact of traffic? You know, what's the estimated cost to maintain walking trails? You know, to me, I, a lot of the stuff that I kept hearing as I'm making notes is, okay, well, you want more walking trails. Do you know that Wilkes Farm is deed restricted, we can't ever build there and we're supposed to have walking trails there and that hasn't happened yet. So do you want me to work on Keisha or Wilkes? We have a council that supports funding those things. Um, you know, same thing with community gardens. Are people familiar with the fact that we have community gardens already in Old Weathersfield and we can't sell enough plots to fill them? Yeah. Are we moving the community gardens? Do we have drainage? You know, those are all those things that like, are we too soon to get into that? Um, you know, in the, or is the third visioning session going to be, if we make this available, sorry, Cindy, getting back to your point, if we make this available to the general public, is this going to drive the conversation that way? So Gary, so Gary I've got a question for you, now, now that you've brought that stuff up. So we have a Millwoods master plan, we've got a Cove Park master plan, we're going to have a Keisha farm master plan, we've got uh, stuff on the Wilkes farm, um, so we've got all these separate master plans. Um, we don't have a comprehensive plan for all the lands in town. So when you say, like you brought up the community gardens, um, you know, I think we should be looking at this, not so much us, we're the Keisha Farm Committee, but certainly the town should be looking um, more comprehensively of where they could go. So for instance, maybe the community gardens can only go on the Wilkes Farm if that's permitted. And then that would open up other land for uh, you know, a farmer or, or other things like that. So my only concern with this, but just being on the park board and everything is, I don't see a comprehensive plan for the entire town as far as usage of a lot of this land. I just see kind of a chunk here and chunk there. So I don't know if anybody else feels about that, but. Dan, this is Paul. I, I agree. I would actually just uh, finish an initial draft of responding to the questions in the listening session one. Uh, and Cindy, I had just emailed that over to you, but that was a theme that came up a few times there saying, shouldn't we be doing this in context of everything else we have? Um, so I'll, I'll just echo the fact that you know some community members uh, shared that same um, recommendation. <coughs> And then the other thing that came up, and it's, it, I think it would be helpful for me personally and maybe the broader group, have, have we outlined all the next steps and, and maybe not the timing of them, but three listening sessions, a culmination of the data, uh, integration into um, a study by University of Hartford, and then communication back to the, the town, and then a presentation to the town council. Like I can't see like an end to end. What are the steps we need to get to a decision about the things we will be recommending for the farm itself? I mean, I could, you want to take a shot at that? I mean, we can, as a group, we should probably discuss what you're looking for in, as an outline. I think, I don't have it handy, but somewhere around there, there is an outline, kind of those next steps. But, um, you know, th this group can decide. Originally, when we RFP'd, we went out for an RFP for a consultant. We kind of had a more of a, a structured process and plan to follow. Um, you know, by losing the funding on that, we had to kind of do a 180 and make adjustments based off of uh, what was available to us. We, um, you know, I don't know if the timeline has changed. I, I hate to put um, Mr. O'Connor on the spot um, as someone who's just coming in on the first go around, but, um, you know, I do think the idea is to take some of this data. Um, we still have some outstanding sources to collect that data. Um, and then, 
kind of peel back based off of the top three. In my mind, it was like the top three to five possible scenarios that you can do and then have University of Hartford kind of rip apart on the analytical component of it. What would it take to create, I don't know, pick one, agriculture, sports fields, what's the return on investment? What's the rate of, of return? What have other communities done? Um, you know, even, even looking at, frankly, I don't know if I would just stick with the top, um, with just the top three book getters. I would, I would look at other kind of fun things in there. You, you don't want to discredit, um, you know, I, while we maybe don't want solar panels there, but there's something about that master plan concept of maybe there's solar panel need in, in, um, in another part of the community. We can use that space for the solar panel and move sports fields here. I'm just making up as an example. So there's there's probably a comprehensive strategy that should be discussed at at this level, um, which could turn around to be a pitch to a different commission, you know, for that matter, talking to Parks and Rec um, and saying, okay, well, you have sports fields here, X, Y, and Z. Those are never going to be functional sports fields, but um, but they could work as a solar field. Um, so. You know, my personal opinion is you probably have to start with the data and then the idea was you were going to use a consultant to kind of vet the data and come up with some recommendations to present to council based off of the data. I, I, I'm still in favor of that. Yeah, and I would just jump in and maybe piggyback off something that was said at that second visioning session by Elaine Paradise. I mean, she pointed out, we've been meeting a long time. You know, she said, what have you been doing? And I, I, I think that we try to give her, as Gary said, the, the brief history of our kind of things we're doing aren't really in person. You know? And I, I think we should try and follow through. And Paul, you can, you know, kind of hear, hear this and see what you think. I think we should follow the survey, um, some suggestions based off that and a presentation to the town council. From there, it really is the council's decision. At least that's how I understood it. <clears throat> if we were gonna try, try and present them with the community input and it, the university, and then it was gonna be up to the town council to, to, to choose amongst the, maybe we give them two or three different options. You know, I mean, the University of Hartford gave us four based on the data. I thought that was um, very enlightening. And they're going to continue to do that. That's one of their key deliverables. So I think we should push to conclude our part of it, you know, by the fall. How does Seems anyone else that, feel about that? I'm just thinking, Cindy, that some of these proposals need to be fleshed out with, as you say, how much does it cost to, to do a sports field? Where are the funding going to come? How much would it cost to, to uh, get a uh, farmer in to lease uh, a house and farm for us or... However, that could be carried out, and, and we don't have any answers of those things. We haven't really looked deeply into either one of those. <clears throat> yeah, I guess the reason I brought it up is that there's a lot of questions in that session one, and I haven't seen the- Well, we have the, some answers. Yeah, and a lot of it was thematic around uh, what's next? How does this process uh, you know, kind of unfold? Um, and I think it would, as we as we decide what the right mechanism to communicate that out with, if we can include um, maybe not the timing, uh, but the sequence of events that we at, at least uh, think uh, should happen um, in order to get to a decision. I'm interested to see your answers because uh, I think that's that's a key next step. Maybe is to you know focus what we're our research is going a certain direction where. Um, where do we, where do we look next? <clears throat> yeah, unfortunately, the questions that were asked were, are we represented by a lawyer and what are the credentials of, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, th those were the types of, uh, I thought we oh. only said open space, how could we consider solar panels? Right, um, right, yeah. And, and so there, it, it's not necessarily a, a construct of where we're focusing, it's just trying to get, um, uh -huh. A response to the things and and do you have a same list of questions that came out of session two cindy that there was no one in the chat room for section two and there I, oh i shouldn't say that there was one 
Wait a minute. I don't know if I printed it out. There was one gentleman who asked a question. Mary, can you remember who the last person in the on your Excel spreadsheet was? Um, oh yeah. So it was Antonio Marcelino. And he said the first one was timeline. What are you foreseeing for plan delivery and building it? Oh. Um, and then glass, they talked, he talked about Glastonbury using community planners. And Gary, you answered, um, you know, that definitely, um, you know, that's a possibility, but it's, we're not there yet kind of thing. Um, but it seems to me like, I, I guess people are jumping to like sort of the end state, but mm -hmm. would it be, would it be helpful to, to frame it for folks and say, you know, we're, we're still gathering, it's going to take a while. Like I, I'd rather sort of err on the side of, I think people are afraid we're going to make some grand decision. And we, we just have to clarify kind of where we are in the process. And maybe that'll help us map out what our next step. <laughs> I, I think you're right. Cause we, and we still have to hear about the barn. We even heard anything about that, you know, uh, that's going to take a little while. And um, depending on what happens with a lot of these things, that's where we're going to go. I know the Millward's master plan what was done was like done 30 years ago. Nothing was done right away. It was done as groups approached uh, the town and they started doing it little by little. But the, the town itself did not put a lot of money into it. It was done by these different groups that wanted things. Um, so I think maybe that's the approach we take is we kind of have a general overview of uh, what this could like look like, but it was in flux. Like for instance, the dog park was not on the master plan. A group came up to the town, asked for a dog park. We had the master plan so we know what spaces were there. So we said, oh yeah, you can do the dog park here. So it, it would be that type of thing where it'd be kind of really general. Um, where we have an idea of kind of what goes where, but it would be in flux. And I think we have to remind the general public and our kind of remember ourselves, uh, kind of what our, what our call is and the fact that we are not necessarily experts in the field, and we're kind of doing the best that we can to bring this to a to a forward conversation. Ultimately, the council is a decider. Right now, it's to our advantage to just build as much of, you know, as much community engagement and go, goodwill as possible, as well as pulling all the data together. Um, and I think we've done a good job. I think University of Hartford's done a good job of doing that. Um, we just need to start to shape it. And I, yeah. do, I, do agree, I do agree we need the master, you know, there's a connection to all of our parks here. This is just another, for lack of a bit, it's a passive recreation, it's 35 acres of passive recreation <clears throat> as it stands now. And, and it was my understanding that our job was to bring the information forward to the council. Our job was to try to elicit from the community what their needs and wants are and I mean, I think we will be able to do that. We are not the deciders in any sense, other than just trying to focus you know, people and information. Yeah, Cindy, I 100% agree. And it's not just, I mean, it's facilitate the community input and then try to contextualize that with some, an economic view, a neighborhood impact view, um, and you know whatever else uh, is expected to come out of uh, the University of Hartford work and then bring that forward. Mm -hmm. And just saying that, I think to folks, I, I really do think it would be worth some, I mean, messaging. I don't know if it goes on Facebook. I don't know if it's, but but it feels like there's, like, what are you guys doing? And and yeah, here's what we're doing. And, and, and no one's making any decisions. No one's, uh, you know, lawyers don't need to be involved because we're not, well, they do, but we're not, you know, doing oh, yeah. anything decisive thing that's gonna, you know, make it go one way or the other. Well, I'm hoping that's where, um, I mean, I, I'm, what I'm hearing you saying, all of you is, is that we have to make sure that our message continues to get out to the public. 
about our role, what we found out so far, and where we think we're going with this. So that, um, and it can't just be Facebook. I mean, I was going to just tell oh. you, we have 300 people that may or may not look at our posts on Facebook. I mean, that's just not the best way for us to communicate. It's a good way. It's one way. Um, there's Facebook, there's Instagram. I thought the Rare Reminder article was the best thing I'd seen in a long, long time. That mm -hmm. was, uh, that. I don't know if you all saw it. Hi, Pam. Mark DiPaolo, Mark DiPaolo wrote an article. He must have listened to the meeting, Gary. I would assume, yeah. Yeah, he must have listened to the meeting, but, you know, he he... He did a good job summarizing some of the ideas that were presented there. And he talked about the survey and the third visioning session. And so I think more people probably saw it there than see it on social media, just because of the way it's presented. So maybe in Mason and the U of H team can help us just, we need to touch Facebook, Instagram, the rare reminder, the great Elm, and maybe even the town website, like every time we do something or every time we have a, um, a meeting or a session, and maybe that will help people understand where we're going. And, and as we get focused somewhat, a Weathersfield Life article. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. harder because of their deadlines. But, but it's the what in the message, like maybe, um, I know, Paul, you're pulling together the answers, but can we create, even if it's just internally for us to all be on the same page, um, if people ask us or, and then we could utilize it almost like talking points for little blurbs, you know, or uh, articles or whatever. But I, I, I sort of feel like I don't, you know, I don't always have the answer or know what to say or where we're going. So if we had a collective sort of internal committee kind of FAQ and talking can, points. I'll volunteer to just write up a blurb on uh, what our mission and the processes and I can get that out to you guys. Uh, I, I do need uh, those, not to pawn it off on other people, but some of the questions I just wrote, Gary, question mark, or does anybody else know of additional, like people are asking what percentage is wetlands. I, I don't know what the answer is. I, I've heard a third. Um, so I, I, Cindy, maybe you can share and, and, and we can um, finalize that, but I will take a stab at like what our role is what we're expected uh, with the partnership, the fact that it will inevitably go to the town council um, and you guys can all weigh in and, and then we'll have a, a cheat sheet uh, to share yep. as part of the next listening session or maybe to publish in the papers and on, on Facebook. So we clarify what the process is because Mary, to your point, a lot of the questions in there were like, keep us informed, don't make decisions without us knowing how, you know, how do people stay in the loop? So I can take a shot at that. Thank you, Paul. I think that will help crystallize it for all of us. And I, I think it'll really help. So thank you. Do you think it's, it's amazing to me that when, um, I'm sorry, I can't remember the woman's name on the town council who didn't know what we had been doing. Many times I know people pose a question because they want to educate people by our answer. But do you think in the town council meeting they can mention that our minutes, which are written beautifully by Mary, are posted for people to see all the time and go back and read. So, so Elaine was is uh, I don't Elaine, know if she's still on board of Ed. She's uh, is she still on board of Ed? Oh. Yes. Yeah, she's oh, not on. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I I tend um, I think I missed it at the last meeting. The budget has really thrown the last two. Um, the second meeting of every month, uh, the town manager does a report, and I usually try to plug the Keisha Farms meeting you do uh, during that report but the last um possibly the last two but definitely the last one because of the way they fell we didn't have a meeting on the, the second meeting in april was my budget workshop uh, budget presentation so i didn't get a chance to present on keisha and then i think may there was something similar it was messed the, the dates were messed up so i typically would have presented where we are uh, or summarize it and, uh, just didn't haven't had the chance I, I was just saying to mention about the fact that the minutes are posted from the beginning. <laughs> so that would answer anybody's question about what have we been doing all this time. Yeah. I think that's something we can get up on Facebook too now. We should put we should put links to the minutes so that people can read them. All right. Yeah. Well, do, that, I just have a question. Um, do we have a web? Do we have? I can't. I can't find the website on the town site. 
we don't have a website. We have Keisha comments mm. at weathersfieldct. Oh, so we don't have a place on the town. Okay, I thought we did. Never mind. And, and that's what we need is a website because yeah. some people more some people go to websites and see stuff. Sure. <clears throat> and with, uh, that's how they do a search. Yeah. And then we can structure it the way we want to. Gary, how do we go about doing that? Putting it on the website? Just getting a tab up there that we could put our minutes on and any other updates. You're uh, the IT guy. We are pressed for space. We could probably get a tab under, under, um, under, uh, yeah, hold on. I'm on the website right now looking for it. Um, Here's my commission, agendas and minutes. Boards and commissions. Yeah, so we could probably get a something listed under boards and commissions. I am working literally with one IT person for the entire town side. He's been without for probably uh, four months now at this point. So we're kind of backlogged, but we could probably get a link up there to like a Keisha Farm section, which would bring people directly to um, the minutes, although if you go under boards and minutes, we are listed there, but just not separately um, as its own board or commission. Which is kind of weird. It would help with our transparency, I think. Yeah, even if it's simple at first and then, you know, we could build it. All right, if there's nothing else, this, that was the University of Hartford update, basically, that that whole conversation kind of spun off that. And if there's nothing else, um, Mason, thank you for joining us. If you're still on, I have kind of a split screen here still. Me and too. Move on to new business. Oh, I can get rid of that. Thank you. All right. So I think that the most important thing we have to discuss is, are we going to reschedule that third visioning session? Um, yeah. The, the, the point of it or the, the approach we take can be discussed afterwards, but are we going to reschedule it? When is it scheduled? Currently, it no, was. It was last week, and we postponed it. Okay. I think it was May twenty fifth. But I mean, in that since that time, the article has appeared in the Rare Reminder that the third visioning session will be taking place, and it is on our Facebook page, and it was viewed by over a thousand people that the third, the second set, third session had been postponed, was going to be rescheduled. So, I'm. I think we always went with that three because that's what all the consultants offered us. So we kind of followed mm -hmm. their model in setting it up. Yeah. Well, if you said it, we should do it. I agree. I agree. Okay. So, so, so just two points, and I'm not against doing the third. The first is, mm -hmm. um, and I think it was great. I think, Cindy, I appreciate that you were able to cancel it. I'm sorry that it didn't go through. Um, typically, what ends up happening with these, even if they're canceled, you'll get people who will plug in and like try to log on anyway, because they didn't get the message it was canceled. I will say that nobody logged in. So that's a good thing. You either reached everyone or nobody was logging in for the third. But however you got it out there, you got it out there. Um, the third is everyone, when we originally plugged this to the consultants, part of these visioning sessions were to bring us through a visual process, which we didn't have, we don't have anymore. So I'm not opposed to doing a third. But just keep in mind that the original intent of the third would be like you'd start to develop these ideas kind of in the air as we as we progressed. We're not doing that anymore. I, I'd like to say we're going to, but we're not there yet because we have a different approach than we originally did the RFP. So that being said, I'll how soon before we could have an in-person visioning session. That would be ideal. And Gary, aren't, weren't the four scenarios that the University of Hartford presented us with based right on the visioning session? I mean, we do have a visual, actually. They had maps, they had drawings. I mean, we have- I didn't, did I miss that? Um, yes. That was during the presentation that they did with us, right? but that was just with us. Right, right. No, that was May 17th. That was a special meeting. I don't yeah. Know open to the public or not, but it was a special meeting. They had four different mapped out scenarios based on the input from the visioning session. With no costs or any, right? They were just, they, I'll have to go back and look. Costs. <laughs> Some of them had costs. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah but 
they I think they said they went out and did some research and they had costs from I think the walking trails um and yeah, then depending on the type of sports fields and depending on it uh, at least preliminary costs on almost everything I think yeah widely ranging costs could yeah be this thing, that, could be that was that. one where I was running two meetings at the same yeah. time so I yeah. Was kind of, yeah. I might have been gone for part of that but, yeah is that is that report that's so that's not open to the public, right? Because it's not, it's I, I'm I mean, in theory, all of this is, right? So people are gonna hear this and go back and look at it. But we were trying, we we wanted to be careful prior to the second um to kind of we wanted to we wanted to be careful with getting it out because it's a much different feel than when we originally did this. But I like I said, we can start putting that stuff out. Um I don't know, I guess I want to think a little bit about that. Uh, for the third, if we want to produce it for the third, or do we want to wait until the third? I mean, I, I think we're going to hear more of the same as my guess at the third, but it might surprise me. Does it make any sense to postpone until September oh. after the summer? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. But, but how can we use what we've, we've learned from the first two and University of Hartford to make it different, to get what we want to get to? Well, well, maybe we can take say, kind of segue off what Gary said and say we need a refinement. When you say open space, you know, wh what's your vision? That's why it wouldn't necessarily be so bad to put up a couple of those scenarios that the University of Hartford created for us. Is this your vision of open space? You know, do you support the use of the property, multiple uses of the property, single use of the property? You know, maybe kind of just ask questions that would help us yeah. get different answers from people refine you know, yeah we if drill. you had an in-person uh visioning session you'd have open space written on and people would come by and write their ideas on it brainstorm open space ideas and then they go on to sports fields or something like that um, so anyway that's a refinement kind of thing <clears throat> and the reason i don't want to wait paul till the fall is because the University of Hartford team, which they're, you know, they, they still have in place, Alex is still involved, their deliverable is to us is supposed to be in the fall. So if we can get this information to them and we can work on a survey during the summer and finally get that survey up, then we can give them the information they need in the fall to produce these this final report for us. But if we wait till the fall, you know how their semester goes. And, um, you know, it's a quick semester. It happens very fast and we'll be in the spring again. So I would really like to see us try to stick stick with what we said we would do. And yeah, that, that wasn't Paul that recommended that, but oh, I sorry. agree everything, uh, Cindy, that you're saying. Okay. Oh, Thanks. now, so maybe the format of the, I like your idea, Gary, do we, or, or somebody else, can we kick off that session uh, with a review of what uh, the University of Hartford folks had put together? And again, only sharing it in context of, based on input from the two sessions, these are emerging as um, some key themes. Here's an initial perspective on what that might take uh, and then jump into the listening part of the session. I, I guess the only thing you risk there is people are just gonna be responding to what they're seeing. Right. Uh, and not coming up with new ideas. Which I'm wondering maybe is a way to blend it. Do you start with um, a list of what we've seen, what, what we've heard and ask them for anything else we want to add. Yeah, I don't know. I think that leads you into the, no, we want to wait and see what you provide us before we react to it. I don't know, maybe it makes sense. We just have one more and see if anyone wants to fill anything else in. But I mean, to Paul's point, wouldn't it be nice to give them some idea of what people have said that preceded them in the first two visioning sessions? Yeah. Yeah, they could react to it, I think. And, and if we have broad categories like open spaces, ask people to be more specific and what types of activities would you like to see in the open space? Yeah. 
I mean, at some point, I think we're going to see there's only so many uses for the land. I don't know if we're going to get anything astonishing that's going to that we haven't thought of. Although I thought solar panels was pretty, uh, pretty unique. I hadn't thought of that, but I mean, I'm not sure we're going to get any any more unusual ideas. I'm open to them, but I have one. Let's try and reschedule it. Let's try and reschedule it, and let's do it with real deliberative purpose. Let's decide. Know what day it's going to be. Let's when we announce it. Let's have the registration form ready to go so that the announcement and the registration are in the same um, place. Because what we had done is announced it, and then people waited, you know, days to get the registration process, and it came separately. I don't. I think it would be better we if people say, "Oh yeah, I want to go to that. I'm going to register right there." And then Gary, you can kind of think about what what we we might like to just put some information out there to people so that they can come knowing what their fellow, you know, residents have spoken about. What do you guys think? I agree. Yeah, I agree. I just think we need to give, us, give ourselves a little bit of time to formulate a solid sort of beginning, you know, like it's not just us sitting and listening. You want to do it in June. It is today is June seventh. Do you want to try and ho hold it in June before people are, are gone for the summer? Yes, I think you should. Yeah. That's that way that's all around. Okay. Yeah. Gary, how long did you say? June. June. You guys talked over each other. Sorry, I couldn't hear. Was that break it up? Mm. All right, Gary, how long will it take you to get the registration information set and, and redo that um, infographic that the University of Harper did? I mean, I'll, being honest, I don't see me touching any of this until after the budget passes, which is targeted for Wednesday or possibly, I'm hoping by Wednesday. So I'm, I'm not able to get anything out much before Friday okay. this week. Well, that's good. To All right, so how about... An then let's give ourselves a couple of weeks to actually let people see it and pass it around and share it. And we'll see if we can get it in the rare reminder. What about Fine. the third week of June? Gary, you're, you look at your schedule. Everybody, third week mm -hmm. of June. I'm on vacation. I'm out of town. Okay, June. 3rd. Okay, can you Zoom from where you are? <laughs> yeah, you sound like my boss, Mark. And in it, in my iPad. How about the week of the twenty seventh, Mary? Would the thirtieth work for you, Gary? June thirtieth. I have a uh, an annual condo meeting, and I'm on vacation. <laughs> I'll, I'll be in the car heading to Kentucky. 29th. <coughs> the 29th is good. Did you say the 29th? 29th of June. Hold on. Let me see what we're competing against. <coughs> That's probably okay. Tuesday the 29th? Okay. Let's, let's try that. What time? Um, I don't know. We had one at six and one at seven. And one at seven was much better attended. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dinner is I think we had said that the second one, the third one should be at seven. So okay. yeah. Tuesday the 29th at seven. All right. And we're not going to talk about it until we have all the information that we'll get it in. We'll, we'll kind of do a blitz. We'll get it in the paper. We'll get it on the Facebook page. Mason will help me with the Instagram, get it out on Instagram. We'll put it in the Great Elm. And, and we'll kind of, this is the third and final visioning session. Yeah, that's how it's got to be worded. Right. This is your chance. Come forward now. Let us hear your ideas. Okay, that's awesome. Third and final. Okay. Any other questions or comments on that? Gary, you'll help me later. Figure, you know, all of yep. us. Figure out we'll figure out the wording. Right. What you want to release ahead of time, if you want to release the pie charts or anything like that. Okay. All right, how about correspondence? I got one request on the Facebook page. Um, 
the, the request was to view the recordings of the first two listen, listening sessions, and it was Gemma Mora. Can we put links to those on the Facebook page? Where are they, by the way? Are they somewhere that we could access? What are they looking for? She, she, the request was, how do I view the first two listening se sessions? Oh. Um, the town YouTube page? Yeah, they should be. I don't know if they're, they should have been posted up there. I haven't even looked, but they're, they should be linked to the town um, YouTube site. Hang on, I'll look. Okay, thanks. Me too. You know, while Gary's looking, um, Jim and Pam, do you want to tell the committee about your walking sessions? We did have three walking tours, and Jim yeah, and yeah. led to. Yeah. yeah, no, I thought they, mine went uh, very well. The only thing is unfortunate when we all went, the grass was so low, you know. It was so walkable. We went all the way out to the end and back. This time, we got as far as the greenhouse. And the grass was so tall, we found you couldn't find holes. I didn't want people to break ankles, you know. Um, and I, I even brought tick spray for everybody. So um, what they saw, they enjoyed. I referred to the map, you know, that they can see. And there was a gentleman in the group who was very knowledgeable about from the town that there is a, a, a map of this land and he, he made it known. So I'm, I think it was, it was well attended. I think there were six people that came and um, it was nice to see them. And, and I think it went well. They didn't have any, any real questions about it. They just knew for definitely that this was for them to call in and participate. It was my opportunity to tell them about the visioning sessions and their ideas were welcomed and needed, you know. Um, so I used it kind of as an educational, promotional thing, you know, to get people to get involved. But um, yeah, that's about it. It was good, except for the grass was too tall and the ticks were too many. How about you, Jim? I had uh, just kind of lucked out on a really amazing moment because uh, one of the one of the uh, walkers turned out to be Cecilia Keisha, <laughs> and uh, so I could say, well. Did you use that open space for a pasture? Yes. Not only that, she has video, which is old movie films, of her uh, bringing the cows up from the pasture to the barn. Oh, wow. And uh, we, uh, I actually asked the historical society if they had somebody that could digitize those things, and they didn't answer me. So I'm going to have to pursue that. But she needs, uh, she needs encouragement to, to digitize that. That would be wonderful. Uh, historical uh, information, and uh, the other another person that was on the on the the uh, walk had recently uh, left her job as a grants person at Hillstead Museum, so oh. another community resource that uh, you know when we talk about maybe having a nonprofit or you know that kind of thing. Uh, I think there's a lot of resources. Several of the people at the visioning sessions said the same thing, kind of, you know, offered their, their skills. So uh, good background. Of course, uh, my group was, uh, was uh, turned out to be uh, focused on agriculture because that's where it was. Uh, there was one person who had worked at the stand, one person who picked strawberries or, oh, and there was another cousin, I guess. So the, the family business uh, kind of thing. Um, so <clears throat> a lot of potential. If I could just add uh, on the subject of, of visitations, I have an open invitation out to a couple of the people on the uh, uh, Bike Walk Weathersfield Committee who are interested in, in uh, uh, mountain bike trails. And we thought we might just take an explore exploratory uh, walk through there through the, wet, the wetlands, down the hill and so forth, and see what we can see. But there's a lot of potential there. I gave the third tour and um, like Pam said, the grass was high, we sort of stood on the perimeter, but um, it was uh, Carol Hurley was on my tour as well as Barbara Rue and Adam Obian. And I encouraged them all to go 
to the visioning session. And I think Carol and Barbara both did, and they spoke. Um, Adam's only comments, and I thought it was something we've been tossing around here too, is that he felt that Wilkos and Keisha should be considered as a kind of a, a whole almost, like complementary whole, that, mm -hmm. that there should be efforts um, to try to see if both of them could somehow become useful to the community. And he very much supported the nonprofit model. So he, I mean, as not, not a burden to the community, mm -hmm. not something mm -hmm. the community would have to manage. And that's his field in school too. So that was interesting. All right, Gary, did oh, you find out, are the videos on YouTube? It looks like the last one that I could find was from May 3rd. When was our, which is our regular meeting? Right. Uh, I threw out my paper. Hey, Gary, while you're doing that, hey, Jim, no, nobody has come forward in uh, the listening session to explicitly state mountain biking. I know, I know. I think, um, so uh, do you want to maybe uh, gather that group to come and speak uh, in the third listening session so it gets recorded? Yes, yeah, that's a good good point. <clears throat> hmm. um, yeah, I, now and, that I think about it, I'm wondering if we didn't have it posted because we didn't want to lead people in a certain direction. Um, I'm actually thinking, and Paul, you said you were going to kind of compile some of the responses. I, I think there's a number of those that, like, as far as the legal and, you know, how is a committee created and stuff like that. I'm, if, if someone has a, a list, anything that you don't answer, I can fill in. Um, but I think we're pretty tight with how we chose or how I chose and, and pick names. And we did a whole ad in the paper and publicized it pretty widely uh, to get people to send in resumes and we received like 42 resumes just for Keisha um, and you know, just couldn't have you all sorry yeah uh, ironically that was one of the questions Gary that I, I punted to you in my response and, and Cindy I don't yeah. know if you want to just share it with the group uh, what I sent over I know two other people volunteered to help me answer them maybe and I don't I didn't write down who they were it was I think Jenna and I right yeah okay uh, then let me send them to you first uh, and, and have you guys add whatever I might have missed. And then, Cindy, we can get you the final version. Okay, thank you. I haven't even seen it yet. Well, yeah, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, I would, if you don't mind, send it to all of us just to. Okay, I could do that. Yeah, yeah. that'd be. <clears throat> okay, so we don't have an answer for um, Gemma Mora yet. We'll, maybe just I could encourage her to look for information on Facebook and there will be a third visioning session and just kind of leave it at that. I'll let you make that call, Gary. Yeah, you, you can decide on that. On, on uh, how we post it? Right. Yeah, um, maybe you and I, we can follow up for when we try to figure out how we advertise or when we advertise the third one. Okay. And whether or not, um, make it available. I, you know, on one hand, I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm all about getting the information out there. I don't want people to feel like we're being misleading. At the same time, I, I want people to think on their own and not necessarily just jump on the bandwagon. So an awful lot of comments though come as uh, bouncing off of somebody else's comment. So if they're able to listen to the previous ones, then they'll come to this next one and say, but you didn't think of this kind of thing, maybe. Yeah, that's true. It's true. <clears throat> it's like collaborative teaching. You know, you do really get a lot from talking and, you know, discussing things with other people. But, or yeah. that guy that said it should be senior housing. It, well, anyway, that's beside the point. <clears throat> All right. One last thing. There is a survey committee, a subcommittee. Pam, right? Tara and Jenna. Yeah. Right? And I think now is the time when it's going to become, you know, our, your job, and I'm happy to help, but to try and formulate this, this survey after the third visioning session. So maybe we can make that the, the, the subject of our next meeting. I mean, we'll have had the visioning session. I think Alex is really good on, you know, assembling the data and incorporating it. And then we can talk about that at that next, our next meeting. 
even if okay. you it over the summer. And I know Tara is very involved with the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving. She's the chair of that committee. They had a professional survey um, consultant work with them, and she has offered to get in touch with that person if it's something that we want to do. And That's we probably do. I think we do. <laughs> we do because it's much more difficult than I imagined. I tried to read up on it online and look at how people put surveys together and how careful you have to be about the wording. And That's right. You don't want to lead anybody. You know, you don't want to make it look as any of these ideas are ours. They're based on the visioning sessions. Yeah, you know, hard. I actually tried to write a question about open. I, know. I actually couldn't even get a word. You know, I didn't want to do anything that would qualify it that might be interpreted one way or the other. In the end, I was yeah. left with open space you know, as the prompt. So it's harder than it seems. So it maybe is. we'll get her to help us. Okay. This right. is Tara, and who else is on that committee besides Jenna. myself? Je okay. Jenna? Okay. All right. Anything for the good of the cause? Thank you all so much. I'm encouraged. I mean, we really are making tremendous strides. Do we want to do anything with this Weathersfield Athletic Parks and Recreation report that Cheryl sent us? Just for our edification? Yeah, just for knowledge of okay. how often the fields are being used. So okay. if you need any more information, you know, let me know or, or Gary and we can. Yeah, and I did have yeah, a request for the field condition report. Uh, have we talked about that in the last meeting that I missed? Got it. Um, one of the things I wanted there was to distinguish the athletic fields from green, green space, space that we, that just, we put just, put just put lines on. on. Is, <clears throat> are we still there? Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. here. Is it... Is it is it possible to uh, eventually, eventually have, have that, that? Is it possible to have that survey identify fields that could be developed, even if they're not? Well, one of the things on the uh, those pie charts that you showed was, I think, one of the things on there was fix the exi existing fields. So. Uh, I, I think we've already noted that. I think it, that's on the pie chart there, if I'm not mistaken. So I, um, yeah, I guess, Dan, my request is the, the fields down at Cove, mm -hmm. we put, it's really just open space that we put lines yeah. on. It's, it's not a field. We have a carnival that we drive tractor trailers over them on. And, and, and I know I'm, I'm talking about one specific instance, but I think it's worth mentioning that we have yeah, things in town that are designed and uh, uh, and prepared to be an athletic field. field. And yeah. then we have areas where we've painted lines on in those areas where we host carnivals in that example. And, and, that's, and that's not an athletic, athletic field. field. Yeah, no, there's majority of the athletic fields are actually just open fields with lines on them in, in town. And I think that's, that's important the baseball fields. Um, that's pretty much how they are. Uh, we, we know, well, I think we all know about that. It's just a question of, all right, you know, what, who wants to do what to what field and where can we get the money for it? So, um, it, I mean, it's certainly Fuller is like that. Some of the fields at Mill Woods, uh, you know, Webb is a swamp, um, you know, we, we kind of know all about all these things. It's, uh, I, I think that's why we need a more comprehensive approach on what we're doing, so. Yeah, I, I agree, Dan, and we, while we might know, there's a perception that there's an abundance of athletic fields. And I, I, don't, I don't agree. Can you assess from that report? It sounded like, it, when I looked at it, it looked like I could tell which ones were the real fields versus not something we could just put on that spreadsheet that would indicate that? Yeah, yeah, I think it's good. I guess she's on that. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I could, I could I take, take a stab, a stab at, that. at that. Okay. All right, our next meeting is scheduled. 
for July 5th? Is that, exactly. correct? Or is that a holiday? <laughs> a holiday. Should we declare that a holiday? <laughs> I think it is. A lot of companies, at least, at least I know. I know. I'm waiting for the town manager to officially let us know. I'm getting like a lot of feedback, so I couldn't. The, what's the date of the next one? July 5th. Like 5th. Holiday. And I won't know when the council is changing theirs huh, until the next meeting in June, whether or not they'll. Uh, uh, whether or not they'll push it which I don't know what the next meeting is going to be for the council. The reason why that's important is if they don't meet on the 5th, which they more than likely won't, um, they meet on the 6th, or will they meet on the 12th? Um, when will they know that? They'll vote on the next, at the next meeting. So, I mean, you could pick, you could pick the 12th, July 12th, as a, uh, let's see who's competing with you on that day. Is it possible since we're all going to be present for the um, June 29th meeting that we could not hold a meeting in July and then regroup in August with updated information from University of Hartford, the survey committee, subcommittee maybe could meet. Is that possible? Whatever you guys want to do. We are having, we're having a special meeting on, on June 29th. How does the committee feel about that? Do it the 12th. Do it the 12th. Okay, we got Of uh, July or August? I didn't know it was multiple choice. <laughs> Mike, it's always multiple choice. <laughs> well, it was the 5th, 6th, or 10th, 12th. So he's saying 12th. I, I'm July. just going to the following Monday just to give you a kind of keep with consistency. Okay. Yes, the, the make, make a motion and a vote. July 12th. Okay. And Gary, you'll let us know if that works July 12th for you. And uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with it. If you guys are okay with it. I didn't hear from anybody. Yep. That works for me. Yeah, I'm good. Do it officially as a motion. Yeah, and like, Perfect. It's good for me. Okay. okay. Are there any comments? Anyone here, Gary? Say that again. Any pop up comments? Anyone here? Nope. No. Okay. okay. Can I just say a quick thing? Yes, yes I'm, on, I'm on YouTube and I see the listening session on there. Oh, so you found, found it. it. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's under Keisha Farm, uh, West Coast, Connecticut. Yes. In listening session, results of the pie thing. And... Okay, I will let her know. Thank you, Pam. You're welcome. Do we, can we post that? Yes, yes, we can. We can say that it can be found. Yeah, that's what you're doing. We're going to make a separate post. post. Just to... Keisha Farms, Weathersfield, Connecticut. YouTube. YouTube. Okay. Great. Um, All right. How about a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Don't move. Don't move by Jim. We have a second. second. All right. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, thank Mason. Mason. Thank you, Mason. We appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Nice thank meeting you. all of you. And uh, I'll be I'll texting you. Hopefully, spelling everything correctly. All right, Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Everyone be well. Thank, Thank you. you. All right.